Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Overpower Cup. We are here with game number two between Elements Pro Gaming and Cloud9, of course, sponsored by ePulse. Talking about GG Bet, where you can find all your betting needs for, of course, this Overpower tournament. And MassReno.com, where you guys can fund, uh, of course, the prize pool for this particular tournament and help out all the pro players here playing today. So, thank you so much for joining us today. Again, Elements Pro Gaming versus Cloud9 on Twitch.tv slash TV. My name is Mont, joined today by Trent. And guess what? Hey, Mont. It is a first ban Monkey King. Who would have guessed? You uh, you sound like you're coming through a different mic. Yeah, I think I, I think I. Radiant wanna... team ban. How do, I, how do I do that? Hold on a second. Okay. Let's see. Is this one louder? Yeah, this yes. this is the right one. That's hey. actually hilarious. <laughs> how did I do that? That's hilarious. <laughs> did you put the wrong mic back yeah, on? Yeah, I did actually. <laughs> It, I literally put the one that was closest to me on, but apparently somehow it got mixed up. And oh God. it's okay. I can still away. like mostly hear you. So okay. All right. So the intro was hopefully good. Oh yeah. Right. No, we're we're here. We're back. Game two. Uh, no <sighs> Monkey King. But uh, we'll see Centaur once again. We'll see Rubik again. But uh, we got ourselves a slider this time to replace Don King on Elements Pro Gaming, and uh, it's going to be Cloud Nine who have the dazzle this time. So we're uh, swapping out supports here. Yeah, I mean, remaining. Rise playing that Rubik was was pretty top tier. Five so it's sort of a deny pick. Obviously, Elements Pro Gaming, I'm sure, play a, a mean Rubik of their own. The Slaughter gets through because of this, obviously, the 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 bans for Monkey King. So this is the one thing that changes. Because Monkey King is such a strong hero right now, and it's, well, considered by at least a couple of teams to be first ban worthy, uh, you know, other heroes get through. Like Slardar, um, Centaur, obviously, two heroes that kind of last patch weren't seeing as much play. They were getting banned a lot of the time. And sort of the meta has shifted because of that. But also, in general, like some other interesting bans. Magnus ban coming out. The Meepo ban from Elements Pro Gaming because they don't want Cloud9 to have a, a win with the Meepo. Um, I think um, remaining. also what you have to look out for, which is what happened last, uh, la yesterday with Five the EG versus um, Onyx series is those last pick alchemists and those, you know, those early on Naga Sirens, those can be a bit frustrating to deal with and very difficult. So we'll see if that's what this meta kind of devolves into. I mean, it's still very early on in 7.03, but uh, right now we'll see another Noia Cloud9 uh, Earth Spirit, it looks like here, Trent. Yeah, uh, the whole the whole idea of the bands getting bumped and everything too is kind of interesting. Um, we didn't have too much of a change, I wouldn't say, uh, because of the major. The biggest one's definitely Ogre Magi. I feel like he kind of fell out of this first band material into like a second phase ban or second phase pick. But yeah, uh, if you look at the top twenty heroes in terms of overall win rate, I mean that's including heroes that literally had one game. So like we're talking like you know fifteen games from Epo, he he won eighty percent of them, did very well. Um, and like higher numbers in that same bracket, 38 games for Sniper, 63% uh, win rate. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Ogre Magi, 104 games. Wow. 65.4% win rate. That's I mean, that's nuts. insane. That that, that's in... like, no one's even close to that. You're winning more <laughs> like, than, you're winning more than half your games and there are, there's a lot of them being played. Yeah. Like, it's just absolutely ridiculous how well that hero did. I mean, he was the fifth most picked hero and... He had that insane win rate, so uh, not too shocking. I mean, he just wrecks your mid, he bullies them, he jacks up your carry. You can basically pick whoever the hell you want for position one. It's very hard to deny them out. Uh, so I think he has rightfully earned himself a, uh, a solid spot near the top. And uh, that other guy who we were saying, though, the sniper, high win rate, win, uh, middle hero still available for Cloud9. They have the Centaur Warrunner. I have to imagine that Elements Pro Gaming are thinking about that sniper right now and considering things like how do we get a hold of him, what can we do? Um, and it looks like Nyx is a pretty good option. You can run into the shrapnel, get a stun on him, close in the gap using the Vendetta. Not too bad. But, Almost uh, certainly going to be a Nyx off lane in the Slaughter support, you think, Trent? Yeah, I would say so. I mean... You know, we saw actually yesterday Demon play a support Nyx Assassin, and it worked pretty well because they had the Nyx Bomb, and they would just Vendetta right. up, and uh, they got a lot of kills in the early stages of that game. The unfortunate He's thing is they were playing against the Naga TA, um, and they didn't have the late game to deal with that. In fact, there were two games in a row. The first game, Sumail picked Alchemist to, in game two, um, and there was another good start for, for Onyx. They were doing okay, doing okay, and then all of a sudden, Sumail got free farm, and of course, you know how that goes when you get free farm to an alchemist. 
And then in game two, it was sort of the same thing, except instead of just Sumail getting farm on the TA, it was also Arteza getting farm on the Naga Siren as well. And that's kind of what I mean when I'm talking about the Alchemist and, 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 and the Naga. Obviously, it depends on the draft and what you have to deal with those heroes, but if they're able to get farm and, and take it to the mid to late stages of the game, it gets very difficult. I don't think we'll see either of those heroes here. I, I would I don't be surprised, know. but... Al Alk's looking all right, honestly. You think so? I th yeah, I maybe, but I always have to. I always forget about Alk sometimes. But that hero is pretty busted. He's very good. That, that so. hero is like, you can nerf him however many times you want, but the fact is, he inherently has an ability that gives you an insane amount of gold, right? And yep. and unless they change that ability drastically, it's like the same problem with a lot of heroes that are always going to be strong in the meta. You know what I mean? It's like why Bat Rider was so good for so long because of just his inherent toolkit. I talk about this so often, and I feel like people just don't understand what I'm saying or just think I'm an idiot when I'm talking about it. <laughs> like, some heroes have inherently good kits compared to others. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, no, it's true. Especially if you're, like, a pro scenario. It's just, like, the same idea of Slark is a really good kit for pubs. There are exactly. equal heroes that have the exact same thing for a pro I scene. Right? right. It just sort of so. fits their play style. It fits the mold. Anyway, I'm not going to go any further. Yeah. You get what I'm saying. I'm glad that you're sort of agreeing with me because that's more <laughs> that I get from most people when I talk about it. So, Yeah, uh, well... Yeah, Terra Blade here, so that could be mid. Uh, could be Ace or Baby Knight playing it. I believe they both have before in the past. That Nyx Assassin is also really important here, because if you look at Cloud9 and that mid roll still, like, we talk about the idea of just the Sniper and how it was just in the last game and everything, but Nyx does so much more than just counter Sniper, too. Uh, makes it so you can't pick the OD mid, or at least you really don't want to. Uh, you don't really want to pick Invoker into Nyx Assassin. There's uh, quite a few reasons not to opt on into that uh, for Cloud9 in this game. So This is the first time I've seen a PA without a Magnus behind her Ten in a while. Remaining. I'm sure it's been picked like that recently, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, and they've even banned... Oh, they didn't ban the troll, though. Dying I'm very concerned about this. I thought they would ban troll for sure, with the Magnus already being banned, but we'll see. Maybe they're not scared of the troll PA. Is that the combination? Um, yeah, Send I think PA so. mid, go troll safe lane. I would guess the only, well, the only downside to that is then you're you're guaranteeing that it's a slightly weaker laner that you're going to be sending mid, but at the same time, you have this Nyx Assassin, so they're less likely to head in towards an OD or something like that. So yeah, they just ban the Viper instead. So I would guess this is troll. I'm interested in this. I don't think I've seen the troll PA combination before. At least if I have, it was Faceless that ran it, but they had a Magnus behind them. You remember that game? I think it was. I think they ran Troll PA, or they might have run them in two different games that I'm misremembering correctly. Uh, incorrectly. Uh, I've definitely seen Five Troll. Who else was remaining. it? Someone else was running a, a Troll in some really funny. Oh, it was um, Spirit Breaker is what it was. But uh, but yeah, no, we've seen lots of Magnus PA. So they just go for a a safer mid laner for sure. Much better at farming up in the jungle and stuff like that. And uh, maybe not wanting to commit to the full melee up against the Terror Blade. Kind of understandable. But why the Amber Spear here? Uh, Besides he, the, I mean, like what you just mentioned. I think magic, heavy magic damage against Terror Blade. If they went like all physical into the armor, that would have been very scary. Unless they got super snowballing and doing lots of damage and stuff like that. Uh, this way, he can just kind of annihilate the Terror Blade. Difficult to sunder. So this actually makes quite a bit of sense. Can definitely understand why Troll would have been pretty scary for them to try and play. All right, 60 seconds left in reserve time. Remember that Cloud9 are up one nothing here in this best-of-three series. I forgot to update the title and actually change Ten that, but you know what I mean. Nine seconds mm -hmm. left in reserve time. Um, Five seconds. Remaining. Cloud9 already look great, honestly. I mean, they have Terribly plus Dazzle. That's a great combination, and they will just go back for the classic mid-hero, the OD combo up with the Earth Spirit. He's great up against the Ember, but that Nyx Assassin is there. So this game's on Mitch. <laughs> Uh, His job is to annihilate this OD. Uh, and the other thing is, although Nyx is to like help hamper and not want teams to pick OD into you, that only counts in like the mid game, right? In terms of the lane, Ember is still going to get shit on because of this. I'll wait and see. I'm still interested to see how this goes. I mean, the way Cloud9 played game one, they looked very good. They had some missteps here and there. And you just mentioned putting all of this pressure on Mitch. I mean, he had a lot of pressure on him last game. He 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 started to deliver maybe about 20 to 30 minutes into the game, but by that point, I think it was a little too late. If he had gotten to a faster start, had some better blink uh, bros early on in the game, they they probably get a bit of a better advantage going into that mid to late game where they started to sort of slip. 
Um, just based off of the draft alone, I, I would I would give my favor to Cloud9. I'm not sure if you feel the same way, though. Uh, yeah, probably, honestly. Yeah. I, I do like the Slider RPA, though. That's pretty dope. Um, super heavy burst damage, although Center Warner is hard to bring down. You have this Grave backing people up, too. And then uh, TB looking for the Sunder on the PA can also be a little bit terrifying with the help of Grave. So I uh, I like what Elements have done, but overall, just as the team, as how I've seen these, them play these heroes before, I would also be favoring Cloud9 to take this one, I think. We'll wait and see as we jump into the game. I'm glad they added this like versus screen to, to Captain Cloud. Why is the rating on top, though? Then it yeah, like reverses that's, the that's draft really and puts it know. the other way. I don't know why that happens. Unacceptable. You know what else? Why are you? You have strategy time now. What do you need to pause for? Come on. There's no reason. Every time. We saw this like every game with the South American qualifiers. It's like every single game. Somebody paused something to do something or other. It was just like, why? Why do this to us? Well, anyway. We're about to jump into the game. And, uh... Lane should be pretty normal, I would think. Don't be anything too crazy. Ace will just be heading to the safe lane on his terror blade. He'll be backed up by Rise. Plenty of room for Anoya to roam around. Oh, this is such a different hero than the Timber that he played in game one. It's so different. Yeah. Ace is a very big hero pool, too. I mean, he was the guy who was like first picking up like Razor when no one else was kind of stuff. So he's uh, definitely always willing to go out there with his hero picks. That should be a quick TV top from Rise. Yeah. LeBron TP mid on the slot arm. I wonder if he's trying to, like, either he just didn't think he could pass the ward off fast enough, or he's trying to bait out a uh, thought by the enemy team that they're going, like, aggro or something. Maybe. Well, they, they see Rise here, so if he was baiting it out, then he did a pretty good job. Oh. Yeah, they nailed where the ward is, though. They and painted. Cole just painted exactly yeah. where it is. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, it's it's Cole. Gogi's going to be playing the PA. That's interesting. So we've okay. got a role swap here. Maybe they don't feel as comfortable. I, I guess that makes sense. Sometimes you don't have heroes that you're that comfortable on. You have to switch positions. The Cole Rubik. Man, that's so weird. That's so strange. Yeah, it looks like um, 30 seconds usually it, it was Cole who was playing it before. So at least the last time they picked PA. I don't know. Maybe they just felt like switching things up a bit here. I guess so. But uh, it's just not something you see every day. It, it also, like, when you see Cole's name on Rubik, it gives you, like, hope for half a second that you're going to see mid Rubik. Never yeah, again right. will we see that, I'm sure. <laughs> this is just an epic bait for them to think it's a uh, the mid Rubik with a support PA thanks the to a Slider, right? Yeah. God. All right, for a second, I then, then you just got my hopes up. I'd like double check all their items no, again. No, no. Just be like, whoa, whoa, I knew. whoa! <laughs> Go get a poor man's shield. I thought you knew that. I was like, there's no way. Yeah. That would have been hilarious, though. Yeah, no. Uh, what was it? Blightstone and uh, the Orb of Venom. That was the play. Is that the opening? Yeah, the support PA. I guess. Well, now you have to get your Blightstone at home because that's not the side shop anymore. That triggered me so much. Why do they make that change? I know that it's like, it's so good for Weaver and a couple other heroes. Yeah, exactly. Like it Weaver and Clinks, the lane I think. broken, actually, with that. So you have to either decide, okay, well, am I getting Blightstone first and not as much regen or whatever? Or am I going to have to send a courier out, you know, at the one-minute mark when my, my mid needs the bottle? It's, it affects the pro games pretty heavily. In terms of, you know, pub games, I'm pretty sure your, your safe laner is just going to take the courier, get the Blightstone, and then your mid laner is like, well, I guess I'm not getting bottle anytime soon. See you guys later. Anyway, so, enough about uh, that. Yeah, so this is kind of the play we often see, right? If there's an OD, you just send the safe lane Ember. Like, you just, he can't handle it. He can't go mid. He's going to have a horrible time. PA is going to do much better. She also works a little bit better with the early rotations of the Slardar, too. She just, like, dagger, slow them down a little bit, get the crush going. Uh, not really things Ember can help with whatsoever. So uh, that allows them to bring up Rise. Just because Ember, I would say, is a little bit of a weaker laner in this situation. Mm. Rise can just keep healing and spamming. And it's not like Ace is going to run into any sort of trouble. No. He does, however, use the first metamorphosis uh, to secure Lassets and with no stun. You know, you'd like to use it for the first wave of Lassets as well to so try and at least lock down a, a kill, but... I think getting off to a good start is good for that lane. But getting the CS, it's 
Slithering Crush on the rise. He has Shadow Wave. Telekinesis is back. They will have Searing Chains. I think, yeah, no Flame Guard skilled up. Rise still might live here with a Shadow Wave. They're going to try to body block. Slithering Crush comes out. This is going to be your first blood by Cole. Stom comes out, but it's too late for Hester Joe to help his teammate out. LeBron taking some heavy hits from the creeps, too. But uh, that's the rotation from the Slaughter. That's the power. Two crushes within the span of, of, of that, that amount of time is, is more than enough to get those kills. Yeah, very well played, too, just to make sure he couldn't get off the Shadow Wave. But Rise unable to do much there. That uh, also opens up a little bit more room for Baby Knight in the mid lane, but uh, Gogi still doing well in terms of the last hits. Baby Knight will start to turn on the denies, though. Yeah, go for these lifts and whatnot. Very obnoxious. Also, last is Courier coming. But, uh... Not much from Noya so far. Uh, he's one and three quarters. Looks like he'll steal the two-minute bounty run. Be a nice grab for him. Yeah, getting off to a good start for this Dark Spirit. I mean, I, again, we, we talk about it all the time. If, if you can't find those kills, those assists, getting experience. The thing is, they have the, the bounty run change does help out these roaming supports a lot more now than it used to. But still, this is not a good Ooh, hasted game. LeBron mid. I think this is a Yeah, oh, he is a haste. I don't know if they can get this kill, actually. He has to, they have to dive this if they're going for it. And Grogu's at a half HP because of the Astral. Yeah, so. it was just ending. If it was like a brand new haste rune, maybe they could like chase a little bit more, but I gotta say, still the pretty mana unlikely. Cost, the mana cost for level, level 1 Slytherin Crush seems always has seemed a bit low to me. I don't know why, but you know, maybe that's just me. Yeah, if it went any higher, it would be pretty hard to run Roaming Slider, though. And top lane, they actually grab another one. Rise level 2. He went for the uh, poison. Looks like he was going for the uh, best defense is a good offense. Did not work out here, it no, seems. No, not at all. Down bottom, stun coming out onto Mitch. Spike Carapace is there, and uh, that should be him getting away. They get one more auto attack out under the tower, but he's more than fine. He takes a bit of harass, but he's actually out of regen now. He should have the shrine ready to go at least, and he does, but he needs to be careful. The Metamorphosis is up. They'll put some pressure on the tower. Ace, level 2 Metamorphosis. was diving behind it for a moment to try to get some auto attacks into Mitch. Mitch will be able to pull the creep wave here momentarily. Experience. Rolling Boulder, they're going to die for this now. Spike Carapace, Boulder Smash goes, but it's not enough. That Spike Carapace being back off cooldown. It was just a little too late for them to go again. They're going to make the decision they needed to make it earlier. They have the slider right back top again here, too. Oh, cool. LeBron that was a little is, bit close. LeBron has done a great job roaming around finding kills here so far. But... Uh, Surprising how much uh, value like EPG have gotten out of this lane top and how many kills they've had with that ward staying there the whole time. Cole pinged it out like at the very beginning of the game. He seemed to know there was a ward there, but um, they weren't quite able to find it or didn't uh, feel the need to deward it. So, for right now, I mean, you mentioned it. They found kills regardless of that ward being there, and now LeBron is going into uh, the classic roaming. I'm going to take your aggressive uh, rune and just. Guess what? Noise doing the exact same thing on the opposite side of the map. Sisters. This is the new hot thing, man, for supports. I guess they've been doing it ever since the change. You know, to these bounty runes to the map. So he'll find some experience for himself. Noise roaming back down bottom. Maybe they could set something out on Mitch. They have Metamorphosis 40, so probably not. Not until that's up and ready to go. That's jail level 2 on this Sensor War Runner, by the way. Steering Chain's going to come out stompy and cancel. Telekinesis is there. Good Shadow Wave coming through, but still going to crush on top of this. The grave comes out. Still might live. Maybe one more auto attack here. Could do the job. Fade Bolt will get it done from Cole. LeBron will dive and probably go down. This tower looks like he will. But it doesn't matter. That's another kill on their, their Centaur. He, he's still not level 3 yet. Uh, as compared to the next Assassin, who's almost level 5. So right now for, for Cloud9, the offlane is not going particularly well. Oh, this is fantastic. I mean, level two and three quarters? Man, EPG are just, they're wrecking us right now. He has to immediately get back up here, though, so he will get uh, a little bit of experience. And uh, his gold is hurting, though. Can't really fall back to the jungle. He's got the brown boots up. So uh, definitely laning items purchased. Harder for him to make that rotation in. And again, they're going to get this kill. Looks like Ryze doesn't have great for 13. Stomp comes out. Uh, well, LeBron misses it. They do get the kill on Mitch down bottom. Double edge coming in. They want LeBron. They're going to get that kill. But again, it's the Centaur dying for it. I will say Swift Ending's not getting the most gold in the world either. He's almost at his bottle, but that's it. And they also uh, get that kill on Mitch down bottom. He just respawned. So it's not actually as bad as it looks, I think, for Cloud9. I mean, look at the, the farm for Terrorblade. Treads, Poor Man Shield, Coiling Blade. He's He's got a lot of his items up and ready to go. We haven't talked about mid that often either, and Baby Knight's doing fine too. 
Uh, he's not going for the treads build. We talked about this um, at the, the major qualifiers. And I think the treads build into Hurricane Pike is fine, but going boots first is something that I... I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm for or not. Uh, it's always tough to play OD when you don't have a uh, some sort of an attack modifier on your team. Like you generally want Bloodlust or you want Beastmaster or something like that. Oh, LeBron, nah, he's gonna oh, get this. He's going. Oh my God! Right. With a double damage. I actually not thought that damage. would be enough. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, he's only rocking 120. 120 damage is not enough to kill this courier. He has 150 HP. Damn. If he was a little higher, that's a kill. But the Courier will get out safe and sound. The OD knowing that the Courier just got hit up is going to play a bit safer, but the Stifling Dagger is going to come out. Maybe he can hide himself. No, he'll hide with LeBron instead. And now that he's under the tower, Baby Knight should be fine. Rolling Boulder. In fact, LeBron is in trouble. The Sprint. Can they get the Boulder Smash off? They can. The auto attack is there. Baby Knight gets the kill. So LeBron comes mid only to feed his life away. Noi with a great positioning. Finally getting involved in a pickoff. Uh, besides that of Mitch on bottom. So a very big kill. And now they're roaming around looking for Gogi potentially. But uh, there's a war oh, there. Mitch is TPing mid with Vendetta, too. This could be He's immediately level 6. And they have a sentry. There's the Astral. I'm to leave. Boulder smash on LeBron. Good spike carapace. Noya under the tower. They're not going to die for this. LeBron really wants to get kills as the Slaughter, who is now only level 3. Who was having a good game up until uh, he died a couple of times there recently. This is going to give some room top for Centaur. He's up to level 3 now. The Telekinesis is there. Swift ending is the Flame Guard. Searing Chains, but it would be a dive. Now he's diving very far. Shadow Wave. The stop is there. That was not the play. Swift ending. Rise with the Heal Bomb. And Cole might be next. Rolling Boulder in. He's going to get caught. Boulder Smash. Not enough mana, but it doesn't need it. Auto attack with the Orb of Venom. One more right click. Oh, that juke. There's no way. There's no way he makes it out alive. Oh, my God. Is he actually going to make it? Are you kidding me? That was the sickest juke in the world. Wow, that was that was pretty nuts. I was just say, how did they not see him? How, Damn, Trent? dude? Cole. I thought it was yeah. Anyway, they're gonna well, push him now, I guess. So looks Group like uh, so he. Uh, I was looking over his past few games, and uh, he he does still mostly play the mid. For them, that's there's not really a question on that. But recently, he's played one Rubik game, one Dazzle game, and then he had a Rubik game two days ago as well. So he seems to like the Rubik. You know, maybe that's one of the things that spurs the change. He's Damn, dude, good. that is that was impressive. Swift ending though might have made the the complete opposite play there, diving that tower. Yeah, Shadow that's wave is so good. And now he's gonna oh, have to dive. Here the comes our Nyx. I still think that they. I'm not sure. It looked they like they saw that. They have a sentry. Telkinesis is yeah. all. Oh, Hesse Joe is in the wrong position. Spike, Carapace, and Pale coming out. Remnant. Ace is still going to town. He wants Swift ending, and he's going to have to Remnant away. That boulder expansion, if it's a half second earlier, that's a kill. Ace is like, listen, guys, we he got has this. Thunder. But no, the Remnant back in. Swift ending finds a double. They're staying too long. They can make the decision whether to fight or to leave. And that means that C9 are going to get punished for it, and Rise is going to be next. Grave will get off in time. But I, uh, I still think he's going to die here. I'm pretty sure Gogi's going to get one more auto attack. Shadow Wave. Stick charges, maybe not. Fade Bolt, that'll clear it up. TP's going to come in, but it's a bit too late. Meanwhile, the OD does not TP. Baby Knight is not ready to go. He's just sitting there farming mid. If he TPs, that might be a good fight for them. But he just sits mid instead. Yeah, I really like that rotation from EPG. I mean, this is what Terrorblade's doing every single pro match. Uh, anywhere from the 8 to 10 minute mark. In this case, it was like bang on nine minutes. They rotate up into your safe lane, and they want to pressure you down with that metamorphosis the moment it's off cooldown. And if you don't rotate five heroes, it's very difficult to save that lane. So, yes, you give the OD in the center war runner some space, but killing the Terror Blade, defending your tower, I think that was very important for them when they have an Ember Spear who still needs so many items, too. I just feel like Cloud9, when they lost that Centaur, they, they couldn't decide, okay, well, are we going to fight? We have Ace doing some serious damage, or what? Sentry, Baby Knight, and Pale avoids it. Now LeBron caught out. Astral's going to come through. They have the double damage rune and a Shadow Wave. Mitch has got the Spike Carapace. Nicely done. Slithering Crush. Now they have the Stifling Dagger crit as well. So they might have been able to turn that around had it not been for the Stifling Dagger. And, uh, looks like Cloud9. They're just trying to find any room that they can get. But all of a sudden, after that fight top, Elements Pro Gaming... They've given themselves a, a good bit of farm here. Yeah, got to say, I like what they're getting done here. Uh, the only problem will be, I think, once the group up starts to happen, it will be relatively hard to fight into Cloud9, I could see. 
Like, uh, Nick Sasson probably going to be the big initiator. Needs to try and get his gold up and towards that Blink Dagger. I'm not sure if he can afford to go Midas first or this Midas Agnum's build that was really popular, but at least for me, didn't seem to be winning too many games. Mid lane rise, gets the armor on. Oh, oh my god. He's alive. That grave came out just in time. Go back up. Stampede, though, as they're trying to get away. Swift Denning was looking for Noya, but uh, it's just a defensive Stampede, it looks like, anyway. Mitch in the bottom lane, vendetta up, looking for S. Joe, another TP coming in. It's going to be the Slaughter, and they're going to make a go Wait here. Wait for that. Spike, Carapace, and Pale. Yeah, Spike, Carapace against Return is, is pretty good, I'm pretty sure. So. Yeah, they might even be able to get this Blink at a decent timing on LeBron, actually. I mean, I was eyeing up, of course, the Nyx Assassin, but the position four is doing very well. Typical LeBron. And uh, even stealing Astral, it's a great one to grab for Cole. Yeah, Level they're, four. Yeah. That's pretty freaking nifty. Oh, man. It was looking so good for Cloud9. Still not looking terribly. I think they have a, a, a numbers advantage, but not by much. LeBron is in Viz. They have plenty of wards in the enemy jungle. They're starting to take control of this map. Hester Joe just got Stampede. He's a thousand gold from his blink. I feel like he should be away for for the oh, Ace in trouble. Yeah, they're gonna get this kill. Sunder's gonna come out. LeBron's gonna back away, rolling boulder. They don't find anybody. Astral. It might be Gogi. They have a boulder smash ready. He gets it off perfectly. Gogi is done. Sanity's dropped, and now it's time to leave. They don't have Stampede. If they had it, that's probably gonna be a stun on somebody and another kill. But Gogi falls. Yes, Swift Ending is getting room to farm top, but that's a big kill for the OD, who now rotates top lane. Swift Ending might get caught here if he's not careful. He should have a remnant. One more auto attack will come out, doing some nice damage. The tower hit's coming through as well. Baby Knight pretty quick. The remnant back, though. He'll try to go for the TP, and it looks like he should be successful. Noya was so close to that rolling boulder, boulder smash. You got to give him credit. That guy is a damn Earth Spirit player, but just a second too late to get that stun off. Yeah, just about had him. Well, oh, I, uh, I'm liking the way the lineups are stacking up, though. I feel like we're at a point now where Mitch is uh, he's ready to do his countering to the OD. They might even get Hesse Joe here. I think so. Stampede goes, but... Oh, that boulder smash again. Mitch can't find the dive. Man. They're so close in, like, all these. Noe is just a... Oh, he's such a... He's, su he's such a player. Let me just say. Yeah, he's very good at He's spirit. a player. Does LeBron on... Uh, PG, but they haven't uh, managed to snag it up from the series. Go for this minus armor stuff instead. Good ending. They want OD. Tell pieces. Oh, baby knight. Good. Usage of that hide. The stun Joe setup. In. They stole oh, Astral. No. Stifling oh, yeah. going. They have Corrosive Haze. The Grave comes out. He doesn't have Sanities for a long time. They really want this kill. Another Stifling. Great hide. The Astral comes through. Gogi wants another stifling. They want this kill. Looks like they might find it. This shadow wave. He's so low. He'll finally fall. They get the stun off. There's the magnetize as well. Can they get any of these return kills? They dove so far. Swift ending. Not taking any damage against the flame guard still. Now the vendetta comes out. Stomp. No. Spike carapace there in time. All of a sudden, Cloud9 getting dove, and it's working perfectly for Elements Pro Gaming. The weave comes out too late. The courier does get brought down as well. Elements are finding everything. Ace, I think, was using the courier to send something. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think so. Actually, I don't know what the courier had on it, but it doesn't matter. Again, Cloud Nine getting caught underneath their tier two tower, and Elements not losing a single hero. Yeah, it didn't have anything on it. So uh, went on down. So I might have brought out the Yasha. For terribly, I was like the weirdest. And it's died here. But Did you hear that? Oh yeah, it's probably on the way back. <laughs> no, the Yasha. The Yasha. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm losing. That, that's tough, though, man. They dive so deep, and you have this Terrorblade in your team, and he just wants to farm up and stuff. And, well, Mitch could set cash infusion. He does just go right for the Midas, 15 and a half minutes in. But considering how much gold is on LeBron, I'm totally fine with this, honestly. Like, it's more important to get the levels on the Knicks, especially in a game like this when you're up against this OD, because your mana burn is going to be so valuable as they start hitting into those next big levels. Uh, so getting that stacked up, very crucial. Yeah, he just gets experience. LeBron can be your big initiator, and you're just bringing up the damage, making sure that you have the uh, the rightly timed carapaces. Ace needs to leave. These astrals. Now. Okay. It's so hard to play Terrorblade in this game too in these fights. Like, he just the second he gets a half HP, he basically just has to sunder someone because he's too scared of the uh, the magic burst that come in from the Ember Spirit. I mean, does he need to BKB? It almost feels like he does. It's not the best item you want on the Terrorblade, but. 
Yeah, I don't know if you can afford to do it, but it would certainly be nice. We'll wait and see. The game's starting to progress in Elements Pro Gaming. Somehow still, not at the top of the net worth. I mean, you look at Ace farming very well. Even Baby Knight after that death is still doing really well for himself. But uh, Elements Pro Gaming are playing together as a unit. They have the late game potential with an Ember Spirit and the PA. Speaking of which, what does the PA actually have? It's getting closer to a Desolator. Not quite there yet, but we'll have it soon. I don't know, man. This is going to get interesting. There's probably like one... If, if, if Cloud9 have one good fight all of a sudden, it just turns everything on its head. Like, the map control is definitely in favor of EPG now, but... You know yeah, what they really gonna, need? Oh, oh. They really need an <laughs> Joe's blink, and he's <laughs> not going to get it if he dies uh, here. Uh, don't, don't go up the hill. Oh, oh, if you can get Vendetta into the double edge, the double damage. Oh, he's not even going to go for it. They're going nice. elsewhere. They want Rise instead. This is kind of a bait. This is a big bait. Boulder Smash actually misses. They might need to stop this. Stomp comes out. It's the Slithering Crush actually that goes to work. They want to get the kill easily. Sanity's dropped. Not really hitting anybody because the Rubik's already dead. Gogi now getting chased down. Boulder Smash. He'll fall too. Yeah, actually, the Evasion helping him out a little bit, but still. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's good. They group up. They might be able to metamorphosis Roche. I don't know. It would be tough, but it would really help their position. I guess they don't have any more minus armor. Oh, they dropped the sentry. They should see Mitch. They do. He needs to be careful. Rolling boulder. Good remnant out. Swift ending was ready for it. He just knew the timing was coming. It's very dangerous plays coming in. But still, I mean, those are some big kills. Those are some really big kills coming up for Cloud9. They now have a D9 YOLO staff. dust. They get Mitch. Come on. That's the joke. <laughs> oh, he's a sentry there, too. The classic at this point. And he has his blink dagger now. All right. Now it's it's go time for SGO. He's like every fight, he's like looked for a stomp, but he can't get Radiant it because, you know, attack. one reason or another. And now he'll have blink, and then he could stampede it after if he needs to. And also, the Manta style is now done for Ace. We talked about the four staff that was just picked up for that World of Bowery. He's still ways away from his Hurricane Plague. He needs the full Dragon Lance, leaving the recipe on top of that. Very cheap recipe. Goki's not doing that much better either. I mean, look at Goki's farm. I don't know how he has so little this game. I mean, he's been involved in some big fights. I guess he's died twice, but still. Yeah, he's been mostly trying to help oh, with kills, God. I think. Mitch. Good spike, but still. I think, you're, I think you are dead, my friend. As a dead bug. That could grab. This is that group up that uh, Nyx definitely hates. Looks like they got their eyes on the mid tower. It's very low. Hard to defend with the Nyx assassin. Shouldn't really be a problem. Swift ending, even showing top. But his is blink now, so this tower might be easy. But the next ones will be, uh, I would say, rather difficult, especially with your TP there. See. Just get blown up immediately. That's a great steal to weave. Yeah, that is a nice ability to have. Industry. Cole is... He's done what he could this game. Level 9. He's going to start getting no fuel levels here momentarily. Get that armor, or the magic resistance, rather. They really need this Desolator for PA. They have a good farm in the Ember Spirit. Blink, Veil, uh, Radiance is next, apparently. Something to keep in mind. Yeah, it's pretty good, uh... Radiance game, OD and Terrorblade, both hate it. Never gonna buy, like you'll buy BKB on OD, but that's it. You're not gonna buy anything else for the evasion, so. Pretty handy. He needs that evasion. If Ace is able to just auto attack you, and even um, even that as well, then you're just gonna die on that hero. But positioning themselves top for Cloud9 to make a reactionary play. Good spot by Mitch here. Uh, Vendetta. They Astral Hide. They Astral Hide along the Grave comes out. The Sanities comes through. Now Mitch is low. Stomp comes out. Has to go. They get one down. That Grave again. Such a good wow. play from that Dazzle. Keeping up Noya. Somehow survives. I don't know how, but he does. They turn it yeah, around. I can't believe he lived there. It was good Astral just to drain the mana, honestly. <laughs> they're they're making these plays. I mean, they're looking like they could just take this 2-0 trend. I mean, it's still very early on in the game, obviously. But you have you have Ace, who I think has only died once. He's working on a Scotty now after he has his Manta style completed. I mean, I'm, we already talked about Ember Spirit, but I don't know, man. 
I it feels like you. once the Agnims is up for Centaur, how are they going to win these fights? Like, PA is going to jump on someone, and then they're just going to back away. Maybe you can lock down the Centaur enough with Vendetta, Spike, to, uh, spike, uh, spike Care Base, and Bell, and then Telkinesis lift Slytherin Crush. I don't know. But even Crazy so. to think how useful this, like, global skill is, you know? Like, he can just be so far in the back line of a fight, he's basically just a silencer. Uh, but he also has this blink initiation, so like he wants to stay hidden, but then he can just save any of his allies who get jumped on. Oh, this heal bomb might hurt. Okay, good. That would have been dangerous. No tower deny. Oh man, they were so close to me too. Thanks, catapult. Yeah, seriously. Just gave him some mid extra lane. Mm, can't punish Noya. Almost. They really want to use this next to the, the, the utmost. Roaming in, looking for everybody, seeing what he could find. So far, it's not much. I feel like the Radiant are just waiting to see EPG go for Roche, and then they'll just go and try and take it. <laughs> Use the Crows of Haze or something. I mean, they have like, a team Like, bully them out of the pit. I don't know if, if, if EPG will ever go in there anytime soon. Maybe when they get the Desolator on PA. Oh, she has it. Okay. Yeah, Maybe she just picked it up. I think it's probably their next goal. That rolling boulder is dangerous for Noya. Boulder smash. See, this Stampede, they don't want to fight this, as you can see. They would have gone for blank stomp from... Oh, well, they did anyways from SHO. That might actually kill me. Oh, this is four on two, though. Yeah. And Nick still isn't moving. Good silence, but he's got a haste rune. This seems like a really good time to go rush. For EPG? Yeah. yeah. They just use Stampede. PA's top. Maybe you guys can rotate, just like TP to your shrine or something, and head on in there. But I don't. Think they're well. sticking around bottom instead. No, they're gonna try to find something, push the wave out. Mitch and Swift ending both farming. I was an action packed game, still pretty back and forth in terms of kills. They're finding some here and there, but not too much happening. Oh, right. this is really smart, actually. If it works. Oh, is this a reverse? Oh, Baby Knight is dead. Nice double stun. That was huge. So, by them staying off the map for so long right here, the Radiant did think they had done exactly that and TP'd to Roche. And you could see LeBron pinging because the way Rubik, Rubik walks out here and just places this ward. And it's just like, oh, I, you know, my team's not doing anything, but it, it kind of looked like they were in Roche that whole time. So they were all running their way over and Baby Knight was just farming down here like, okay, yeah, I'll TP to Shrine and join the fight. And suddenly there's just three heroes still camping here that that's whole time. Like, so That's when you just hate, like... Like it's Slapped super yourself. next level, actually, like securing this Roche. And you hate getting caught by that as Baby Knight too. You're just like, man, I can't believe I fell for it. But it was an insane play from EPG, and that does provide them Roche on. There's no contention down bottom. It looks like they're trying to jump on Denoya, and he might die. And magnetizes up the silence as they're rolling over. He's trying to get out as best as he can, and he will sled in this. Dude, he, he killed he it with the just illusion. Killed Roche. Did he what? actually just kill Roche? It was that Terror Blade. It was literally a terribly conjure image. What? How does that even happen? And they're gonna get That's amazing! I <laughs> wish I saw that. I was watching bottom. No, Swift it literally just it. walked in the pit <laughs> Doesn't that isn't that supposed to just die? I guess it still gets the damage it off. It gets one auto attack off before dying and it somehow steals Roche. I really wish no, I saw that see. too. I was watching bottom and I didn't see it. I'm actually upset right now. That I missed that. Uh, I can't believe that happened. That's actually a lot of gold. You know? Yeah, you get the ages, but it feels pretty bad. That's actually too funny. Yeah. That's pretty insane. Yeah, that is pretty insane. Anyway. At this point now, with the Aegis, you have some time to work with the EPG. It's not like there's really any pushing happening. And, and, like, nobody's really trying to take tower. Even with a Terror Blade, he's just farming at this point. At some point, they will group up when he has the Scotty, maybe. Or actually, he's going to Fusil instead. And now he's going into BKB, which we, we already talked about. It's going to be a huge item for, for Terror Blade. I'm surprised he didn't go to the Scotty, though. He, he had that in his quick buy for some time. I don't know, man. Oh, it was the Stampede. It was the Illusion Stampede. Sorry, I'm looking, I was looking at the combat log, and I was like, how did that happen? So, the Terrorblade Illusion hit Roshan with Stampede for 29 damage, and then the Illusion hit him for 86, so it does get one attack off. Wow. That is so funny. funny. So he brought it down to 19 HP, and then the Illusion got one right-click on and killed Roche. 
<laughs> that is that's too good. <laughs> that's honestly, hilarious. that's actually ridiculous. That's actually hilarious. All right, thanks, Combat Log. That's some good shit. Wow, that is fantastic. <laughs> oh God, I'm so angry. I didn't see that. I have to go back. I mean, it wasn't that really. exciting. It was literally just the illusion of walking in and tapping Roach. And I but was it's just the like, act well, this, of like, this seeing this it happen and just like seeing is believing kind of thing. Like, I still can't believe that it actually occurred. That's too funny. All right, well, they did it, ladies and gentlemen. So, but uh, yeah, no, as you were saying, sorry, well, I was trying to dive in that combat log. I don't know what I was is, saying, to be honest with you. It's deep. The BKB, it's a good uh, choice. Yes, good I call. think, um, as you said, Scotty's kind of like the ideal situation, right? You want more stats, you want more damage control on Gogi, who has a DD, by the way, uh, and an Aegis, but they still care. That illusion did some work. Is that half HP? He's going to buy a BKB next, by the way. Mitch's progression has slowed down since dying a couple of times. Rises a medallion into Solar Crest. That'll be a huge item for his team. And the Ag's Centaur is sort of close. Mitch looks for Ace, the mana burn. He's completely out of mana. He has stick charges. Noya coming in. He wants this uh, Aegis. He might actually find it. Stomp comes out. This Aegis is gone. Yeah, all Gogi's going to lose that for sure. This is like a we forgot about Shrine's fight. I don't know what is happening. I'm pretty sure Gogi is dead again. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Definitely. What? Ace gets a double. They're going to find a third. What is happening? The chain feed is real. Ace is getting a triple kill. Odi just got a BKB. Now Ace has enough for his. And they could just straight push into the tier 2 tower. The good thing, at least for EPGs, is there's a creep wave, sort of mid, that's about to die, which Baby Knight will take care of. That was the, the strangest fight if you want to call it that, I've seen in a while. Not really sure why they stayed or did what they did to begin with. Man, that is actually, that is something else. Yeah, yeah I don't know. That was a weird place to initiate. Dangerous stuff. Um, does not work out. Mitch is now back sitting in these trees. I'm like worried for his safety yeah, with Hesse Joe standing right there. Oh, my God. oh he might pull oh, Hesse Joe fine. Oh, I don't know about that, Mitch. I really don't know about that. Now you definitely can't defend that tier two tower. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. I got it back. Oh, baby knight. I don't know. Maybe it was sort of a bait, kind of. Stomp coming out into one. Swift ending. Sanities gets baby knight. A double kill blows away another, and there's going to be a third going down. It's Ace falling. And also, Gogi is probably dead. He's pretty speedy, actually. He might be able to live. Just kidding, has Joe is going to stomp. Triple kill for Baby Knight. Uh, Trent, this game is getting out of control quickly. I yeah, don't know what happened, is, but... It, <laughs> the wheels fell off, man. They really did, dude. I, I think it was kind of obvious that they would get to this kind of group up point. This is kind of what OD does. He wants to fight with his whole team. He's very scary. He just right-clicks you twice and throws out this big ulti. He's hard to deal with with all his allies around. I mean, they have Dazzle TV, great combos, all this stuff. Everything in their lineup synergizes well. But they, they really needed, like, just this... Like, a little longer, man. I could see this Radiance coming online, right? And then maybe he's split pushing and joining fights, but he still doesn't even have bots on Swift Ending, right? Like, it's so difficult for him to be everywhere to force C9 to split up and join fights. And uh, they just didn't quite find their moment. Now they've lost their Tier 3. It's not a full set of racks or anything too detrimental yet, though. And uh, oh, they, they will lose their Shrines, nearby. though. That smoke, they just smoked. I don't think Mitch actually saw it, to be honest with you. But it did break. Ron is oh. making bad. So, yeah. <laughs> Swift ending needs to leave. Wait, did he end up getting the Scotty? He did. He's not going to be. Make up your right. mind, Ace. God. <laughs> I mean, once you win that fight, who needs a BKB, dude? I, I guess, like, I guess that's, that's, that's really. That's 100%. They just throw like eight kills at you. Use your Manta. Use your Manta. Or not. I guess he didn't need to. Well, that's the full set of racks. And the death of Mitch, and probably a couple more trophies. Uh, wait, did he steal that? Okay, he did. <laughs> I was like, that's the strangest. I mean, to be fair, Baby Knights have been a little, because he's just trying to dodge the Knicks the whole game, so his have looked really weird. He just, like, throws it out the second he yeah, knows I, that either I care if it's on cooldown. Baby Knight, like, I was about to. Yeah, <laughs> I was just going to, like, whatever, down. you know. I was meant to have this. Well, the good news for EPG, if you could call it good news, is that they have Tier 2 Towers up, so they, they, they won't lose more than one set of racks. But uh, they will lose their Shrines in, uh, in a moment, once Metamorphosis is back up or when they feel confident. 
Roche respawns probably a while away too. They just lost that Aegis. Actually, it could be a minute. It could be a minute that it's up in, but we'll wait and see. They're gonna send illusions over to the shrine now. That's the Ag Centaur now done, so if you ever had a chance at winning a fight, it was before this item and now with it, I don't think you can really. Yeah, it certainly feels that way. Alright, another Invis rune. I feel like this has been the day of Invis runes, man. They're everywhere. Uh, Noya knows there's a sentry there. Damning silence. Stampede. Good telekinesis, actually. He should have just won for the stomp when he had it on, on Swift Ending. It's probably a kill if he gets it. Well, it's definitely going to be a shrine, I would say. Unless everyone bails. Alright, we're just bailing. We want this PA. Gogi, they ha he has TP, but still no BKB or anything. So, he... Yeah, he should be dead. Now. He should have ran uh, five seconds ago. Oh, no. oh, 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 jeez. Okay, that's a joke. Don't scare me like, like, like that. Alright, that's just... Well, maybe I got a kill. And it's sort of man fighting alone. Rise is nearby to help out. He's got a BKB still. Niche by Carapace, rolling boulder. He was not expecting this Earth Spirit to show up that quickly. BKB goes, Mitch is dead. Oh man, not only did the wheels fall off, but the freaking car is just exploding as we speak, honestly. Yeah, I think there was a cliff or something he came off of, but... Yeah, it might be. Look at Jeez, the look hurricane, hurricane bike. Oh, the triple kill. <laughs> That's not, it's just, it's an orbital blast. Bombs away. God damn, dude. I don't know what you do there, other than die. Meanwhile, tier 2 tower top. I guess this is some space creation for LeBron, but not really, because guess what? Ace is uh, uh, wrecking your base. Ace. Give me that tier 3. I munch it on up. I think it's going to be more than the tier 3 tower, my friend. Manta pops, melee racks. Your fade bolt does not stifle the damage base enough for him to be anywhere near concerned about this. Elements Pro Gaming, it looks like this might be the end. Game two, hanging in the balance. Not really, it's more like hanging in, in Cloud Nine's favor. That Such a stable game gone. for so long, man. Just uh, like a, maybe a 1K lead for like 20 straight minutes from like eight minutes till 28 minutes kind of deal. And then an explosion of net worth as C9 take a bunch of kills all in a row. And it's very much like game one where C9 just had a draft that you were gonna be okay with if things were like even and chill for a long time. and. EPG needed to get some sort of a ball rolling. And they just couldn't quite get it. We never saw, that I can recall, any big explosive chases with Gogi and like Amplify Damage or Corrosive Haze it's now called at all, which is like your signature combo in this draft. He has one kill. Uh, just, he didn't get going. Good steal from Cole to get the rope stop. Rise, the grave comes out instantly, and all of a sudden this fight turning pretty poorly. Shrine will not keep Mitch alive. Cole's going to be next. Corrosive, or the weave is on him. Actually, might get Baby Knight. The double damage Gogi is doing enough. Meanwhile, they get the kill on the Ember Spear, which is the biggest kill they can get. Reflection up on a Gogi. He's trying to run. Ace wants to man fight. And uh, Gogi comes in trying to help out Noah. Grave up three down on the side of EPG, and it looks like it'll be a fourth here. Poison Touch is there. Good dodge with the hoof stomp, but it doesn't matter. Four dead. They're going to find at least Cole will get the kill on Noah, but another stomp and Blink are ready to go in about three seconds. Can Cole get out? He's a blink of his own in five. The juke. Can he do it again? The weave is there. Yeah, he actually just did. He actually just ju juked again. And he actually wants to kill Rise. Telekinesis. I don't think he has the oh, damage. Oh, he needed the Shadow there. He steals weave. Cole, it's too much, man. I like what you're doing here, but that's going to end in you dying. It's a good <laughs> attempt. I mean, that game's over. You hope he Shadow Waved or, or poisoned or something so you can try and get the kill with it. Instead, I think that was his play. He steals weave. Yeah. And, uh, let me tell you, the auto attack damage of the Rubik, it, it's not its not really going to help that much. Well, folks, that looks to be it. At so what's our second time. match of the day? <laughs> what, what, what was that trend? So what's our second match of the day? Well, coming up, we have Friends vs. Empire, assuming that there's not some gigantic comeback. And all of a sudden... Cloud9 get five man wiped, which I actually wouldn't put out of the realm of possibility. But it is a 20k net worth advantage, but now with a butterfly for Ace. But it is Friends versus Empire, which hopefully is a good match that comes up next. Um, in about, uh, I'll find out at the time in a minute. That's this point he's dying. Goodbye, Swift.
Oh, nice. Rise kill steals that. Very well played. Excellent support play. Yes, Rise. Good work. He deserves it. Look, look how rich he is, dude. Dude, He's Rise's on series. Rise's it. series, the Rubik game, this game, like, he makes Dazzle support look so good this game. They had no way to deal with the grave. His Shadow Wave helped kill Swift Ending early on in the game. Gogi forced the top BKB. Sanities comes out, does some damage to Mitch, but that's about it. Stomp coming through from Cole. Actually, has uh, the Ghost Scepter. It's not that bad of a fight. They're forced to buy back on Swift Ending. Baby Knight actually might be in trouble here. The Grave is out. But the auto attack damage is there. He has plenty of attack speed as he has a moon strike. He will end up falling, but he's the only one to go down so far. Another buyback is coming out. It's going to be Gogi as well as Florida or LeBron. Noig trying to roll a boulder away. He didn't have a boulder left, though, and all of a sudden, it's getting crazy a bit too, uh, bit too crazy. The remnant's coming through. It's four about to die as Rise's grave is about to fall away. Swift Danny finds himself a double kill, and, well, Ace is going to have to back up. Okay. I might have spoke too soon, Trent. I, I think that might be the case. I mean, they all bought back and they got mega'd. I don't, I don't think it matters. It's still, it's a hundred gold net worth gain for listen, the dire. Listen, I'm trying to create. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm giving nothing. They, he did get 4.2k experience on the Ember though, and a total XP change of 5,300 positive for the Radiant and 11,000 for the dire. That is so much experience. <laughs> That's actually pretty great. Um, just to confirm, everybody, Friends versus Empire will start at 2030 CET. We're in that weird period of time where there's usually the, the difference between the East Coast of America and CET is six hours. Oh, I know. But, I hate uh, that. What? I hate I hate this period of time you're talking about. I can't stand it. It's like, it changes it's like the difference. Usually the time difference is six hours. But for some reason, there's this time where it's not, you know, Daylight savings, or whatever it's called, or you know, where we just changed our clocks forward. I don't think the Europeans have done that yet. So. Oh yeah, they're they're a little different, it seems. They have like a week or two where that it doesn't happen till March 26th, I believe. Um, so in a couple days they'll change their clocks forward. But uh, the the next match will be 20:30 CET, which of course for those of you that are in Mountain Standard Time, which I'm sure is all of you, uh, it's 1:30 Mountain Standard Time. And for those of you that don't know how to do the conversion between Mountain and Eastern, which I feel pretty bad for you if you don't, that's 3.30 Eastern Standard Time. Or Your like true hero to the I, cause, Mott. I, I don't know what's going to This is also a good time to talk about Matrino. Uh, this little thing you're seeing in the top right corner of your screen, that's the prize pool that we're trying to raise for this tournament. So far, it's up to 5,000 extra and... Uh, well, we can get some more here, guys, if you check out matrino.com and look for, of course, the Overpower Cup. Uh, if you want to help out these players, these these European players, and get some extra money in their in their wallets for this tournament, go ahead. Uh, it's a great way to crowdfund a tournament, uh, you know, besides, of course, Valve's own system. This is another w great way to do it, so definitely check out. Or better yet, Mod, I have a better idea. What? You can play in this tournament by joining Pug. Absolutely. If you and you get good enough. Players, Pugna's the way to do it. If exactly. these comes out, they're all going to die. Everybody's got, there, There's one other thing, though, Mon. What? If, if you do become a pro player, you can't use GG Bet. No, Because it can't. has all the best bets, but you can't do that when you're a player. <laughs> so for now, I would recommend doing all your best bets on GG Bet. Oh, uh, they are diving the fountain. We're talking <laughs> about our sponsors, and I, I think uh, this is going to be it, my friend. Yeah. You know Remember, what else? this is a single nation tournament. They're done. Yes. That's that's why they're holding on for so this long. This is a yeah, it's a savage ending to a savage tournament to a savage game. I gotta say, Cloud9, despite a couple of missteps here and there, I think they were just the better overall team. Uh, they won 2-0, they won convincingly. It wasn't any real doubt in their minds, I think, in either game that they were going to be in some trouble. Um, overall solid play trend. I mean, and there's we we kind of touched on everything before the game ended, but do you have any closing thoughts before we take a break? No, uh, Good to see C9 performing again. I, I guess they kind of have EPG's number. They beat them in the group stage at uh, the major qualifiers. And then uh, they've also just beat them the other day, too, I believe. They, they played, so they're uh, they're looking good. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, Trent, how do you want to do this? You just want to go on a break, and, and, and you, we'll just mute everything and turn music on. We could talk if you want. I was going to go get my Switch and bring it down and then, you know, kind of... Oh, good choice. Good. I actually, yeah. I'm gonna stream. I so I streamed uh, Zelda last night, and let oh, me yeah. tell you, it works really well. And the Does only it? problem is that I can't have like the, the the camera on at the same time as I have the switch. Otherwise, it lags the computer all hell because you're using two capture cards. But um, ah, 
Right. I'm sure this is a, a, nobody cares about what I'm talking about right now. I'm sure. Dude, uh, you should you, just put it on in the little window. With the I, I was thinking about doing that actually. <laughs> That's what I do when I do production. I mean, I might. I just do play that. random games. Like, why not? Yeah, I'll do that. I'll think about doing that. Um, in the meantime, though, we are going to take a break. We have about an hour uh, before our next series will start. So make sure you guys go out, get some food, grab a drink, get some coffee, do whatever you need to do to come back and watch us and watch these teams duke it out again. It's Friends versus Empire that is coming up next. Should be a very good series. Empire, obviously, very, very close to qualifying. Um, very good team also. Very excited to see what they could do in this particular series. Um, oh man, I'm excited for this one, Trent. But Woo-woo! Anyway, we're not going to keep you around any longer. We'll take a break. I'll come back, and I'll play some games, and we'll see you guys in a moment.